Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and this week I'm going to show you how to turn ordinary wood into amazing wood epoxy bullet cutting boards. So stay tuned. So getting right into it, I start off by cleaning the edges after I've selected the wood that I'm going to use and in this instance I'm using Matumi, it's called African Teak as well. So as you can see here, I'm really just getting into the grain of the wood, trying to remove all bark so that we can have a perfect bond with the resin. After cleaning the live edge with the metal brush, I then go and use a sanding disc to make sure that I remove any marks left of the brush to get that live edge looking perfect. So after giving it a good rub, I then take it out and then proceed to continue on the mold. And for this mold, I used melamine and taped it. So I'm not going to do much. I'm just going to tape the melamine and make sure that I seal it properly because I'm just going to place the wood on top of the melamine and then seal it with silicone. So I'm not going to do much in terms of sealing the edges of the wood. I'm literally just going to seal the bottom um, with silicone. That is enough to keep the wood down and also um, even um, almost not necessary for clamps. I barely used clamps with these boards and it came out perfect. So here you can see I'm just placing them on the pre-marked areas that I had done beforehand, making sure they fit properly and is clean for the silicone. And here you can see me using my nice silicone gun. Um, it works the best. <laughs> but um, as you can see here, my ambition to silicone got the better of me siliconing the wrong side of the slab but anyways I realized that and uh, made sure I siliconed the right area. So after siliconing everything I then went on to start mixing the resin giving it time to dry while I mix the resin and here I'm using AMT's two part wood cost 30 where it's a 100 to 60 ratio or a 5 to 3 ratio and um, uh, for these colors I used black pigment from AMT as well as the sapphire blue pigment um, powder. So when mixing resin you need to make sure first of all to pour the correct amount and therefore I use a scale to measure the correct kilograms and Another thing is always remember to stir it well to make sure that the chemical compound has a good bond when pouring the resin. And as you can see I'm not using a lot. I think I use for this pour is about 2 liters per chopping board. So after I poured the pigment I only used one drop for this resin pour. I then continued to stir it well and you really just need to give it a good stir to make sure that the chemicals do bond perfectly and then I continued to do the pour. So these four chopping boards, two of them I wanted to do bullet casings in the resin pour so two of them I poured shallow passes to let it dry and to then cast the bullet casings afterwards. Here you can see it's the chopping board that's taking a complete resin pour. I ended up just filling it um, with the Woodcast 30 and the nice thing about the Woodcast 30 is that you can pour uh, you know I poured up to three centimeters um, and it worked perfectly and I had a fan blowing that's really important when you do these thick pours is to make sure that the temperatures are not too much because it can end up cracking when you pour thick pores and here I'm pouring the sapphire blue it's an amazing color this was probably the most satisfying part of this project so if you like what you're seeing please subscribe like the video and share it 
I do appreciate everyone that takes the time to watch these videos and I hope you can learn from it. I'm learning and I hope everybody else can find something out of these videos to enhance their skills. I'm learning each day. But stay tuned for the rest of the video and once again thank you. So after the pour I let it cure for about 24 hours before removing it from the mold and I must say this was also a very satisfying part in the project where I took the boards that I poured the full resin and removed them from the melamine. So here we started with the chopping boards that were going to get the casings and I literally just filled it up to the brim with clear epoxy and we started placing the casings inside the clear resin and an important thing fill the casings with resin before you place it in your chopping board this prevents the bubbles from um, forming inside the casings and potentially leaking while the resin is curing. As you can see we just placed our first bullet in and then I got my fiance and my good old friend Marty again helping me to fill the bullet casings with resin and this actually turned out so well. Here just for safety reasons I pick up every casing to make sure that there is no air trapped inside then the very next day after leaving it for about 24 hours i then started to remove it from the molds again really easy process and it came out so well after removing it from the mold it was then time to start planing the boards to the desired thickness of the chopping boards and this was a timeless process um, having to plane, you know, not even millimeters off at a time to ensure that the resin doesn't chip. And um, here you can see I'm just planing them piece by piece. So here you can see it's just more planing and planing, making sure that I get the correct um, thickness of these chopping boards. And just really make sure to do light passes don't want to chip the resin with the planer um, which at the end of the day will give you a low quality product so here I'm just making sure that I do light passes to ensure that I do give a good quality product and this can be a time use process doing the planing as well as the sanding but at the end of the day it's really worth it to take your time with these steps to make sure that at the end of the day you deliver a good quality product for your customers. After planning obviously there was such a big mess and I still don't have my dust extractor set up 100% as it is still new. I need a few clamps and fittings to make it work but this was also a good part having to clean just before I started with the final process of sanding and here you can see I'm just trimming it to size before I started the sanding process. Just a little side note when you're doing casts where you want to encapsulate something like the bullet casings just always remember to place it a centimeter or even five millimeters from the side because when you need to trim it you don't want to cut into your um, casings or whatever you want to encapsulate so just a side note remember that and here you can see I'm just trimming it to size with my table saw and <clears throat> as you can see I'm using my eye protection there it goes perfect and um, that's just to ensure that I don't get any kickback or wood in my eyes as you can see there goes my eye protection again um, so comment tell me what you think about my new eye protection 
it's been in the market since I can remember really a trustworthy tool so here you can see I'm giving it a 45 bevel just to add to the overall look of the chopping boards so here you can see I'm just continue trimming making sure that I do all the edges of all four chopping boards nice and smooth for the sanding process and now for the process that we as woodworkers love the most the sanding process here I have my Rotex on the Rotex mode and it really just dives into the resin and I'm using an 80 grit here and after I finished all four boards on the Rotex mode I then went on to the finishing sander and I started on a 60 grit which removes the marks that the Rotex leaves and as I've mentioned I don't have all the fittings yet um, so there is a lot of dust currently and I know that the Rotex along with the MIDI works perfectly and I am aiming to get a MIDI one day but for now this will have to do and I must say it worked out very well so as you can see I'm just going through all the steps to make sure that I leave no soil marks on the resin and the wood is sanded so yeah I just want to thank everybody for watching up until here it really means a lot and I hope you've learned from watching this video I definitely have one thing that I've learned is to make sure that when you do passes over the resin to clean it every 20 30 seconds that way you make sure that no dust clogs on your sander and you get the perfect finish on your products whether it's resin or wood make sure to clean your surface before you sand again that way you minimize any scratches on your resin or even your wood but here you can see it started looking amazing and i was so pleased with the end result so thank you everyone for sticking around i appreciate it and i hope you guys enjoy the end product as much as i did mm -hmm.